Welcome to Candidate Spotlight, a production of Arlington Independent Media. My name is Ted Billich, and I'll be your host today. Uh, with me is Bruce, Bruce Wilgenon, who aspires to a Democratic nomination for one of two county board seats that are up for election this November. Bruce, welcome. I'm glad to be here. One of the things that uh, Arlingtonians are, are sort of mooting right now is the, the issue of continuity and change. Uh, over the last 12 months, we've moved from uh, a situation in which uh, there has been essentially one party government, um, which had gone back a, a number of years, to a much more diverse circumstance. Uh, as you approach the voters, for the June 9th primary. Uh, are you advocating continuity with the incumbents who are stepping down, or are you advocating that you would be a change? The easy answer is that I would be a change, um, but I'm also a Democrat. I'm, there are many, many good policies in place here in Arlington, and many that uh, should be continued and expanded and so I don't think that I'm a radical change, but I am a Democrat who has not been involved in the county government. I've been involved in the federal government and state races uh, in the Democratic Party, but in the county government, I've been the guy in the back of the, the ACDC meetings, and, um, and so I know, I know the people. I've watched, I've seen our political establishment at work and, um, and seen, I think, some of the shortcomings. And so as an outside voice within the Democratic Party, I will offer a new point of view and I will offer change. Now, when you talk about uh, uh, some of the shortcomings, I know that you, you are a good Democrat, uh, but contrast uh, some of the activities that, that, that uh, have gone on with what you would have done differently or what you would differ do differently as a county board member? A particular interest of mine uh, would be to um, uh, control our capital expenditures. I think that um, in the past, let's say, five or six years and maybe longer, uh, a focus has been on large-scale capital projects, uh, such as the um, Aquatic Center. Um, we can reach back and talk about the streetcar if we want to, but thankfully that's off the table now. I was not in favor of it because I didn't understand how spending a half a billion dollars was going to, uh, at some point in the future, redound into um, uh, increased um, tax revenues, which would support our parks and our schools. It, it never added up for me. Um, I would not have proceeded with some of our signature projects. I think that we need to reassess how our bonding expenditures will affect the debt of the county and will affect essentially the well-being of our children. How is it that uh, these decisions have been made? What is it structurally uh, that, that has caused some of these capital expenditure decisions to be made uh, over the last couple of years? Well, more than a couple of years. And I think that's part of the answer, is that there was a period of time in the not-too-distant past when all of our office um, complexes were full. We did have a great uh, federal presence here in Arlington, and our commercial tax revenues were um, uh, uh, at a fortunate level, let us say. And I think this um, developed a, a culture of we can build more or we can do something grander, and that has changed. Now, when you talk about the county budget um, and, and you talk about grand projects, uh, is that the, the principal issue that the, the county is facing, uh, or, or is there a more basic issue with respect to uh, priorities and spending across the board? It, there isn't a one issue in this uh, election. It's, it's really, we are at a point where we must balance many issues. Um, we have uh, many um, communities here in Arlington, and uh, one of the challenges to the new county board will be to fairly balance the interests and the aspirations of our different communities. We have to, well, I've, 
The facilities study that has been going on, I've been attending every meeting, I find it absolutely fascinating, especially the demographic information. Uh, we, have, we are becoming a much wealthier county over the last 10 years um, by household measure. Um, and we are, uh, bec our lowest income segments are disappearing. We, so the affordable housing issue is an important issue, and I think it's a moral issue, and I also think it's an economic issue. And so we need to continue with those programs and maybe expand uh, um, smaller scale affordable housing projects on what might be called B or C level properties. We're very good at the large scale, and APA and AHC have done very, very good work um, in, in uh, acquiring the money and allocating money to purchase and operate larger affordable housing complexes. When, when we talk about affor uh, affordable housing, that is often a code word for uh, low-income housing. Uh, sometimes people talk about housing affordability uh, and, and are using that as a code word for making sure that millennials can live, work, and play in the same jurisdiction. Hmm. Um, is there a dichotomy there? And, um, and if so, what do we prioritize? We are a, a small county. We are 26.2, I suppose, square miles. There's not a lot of land here, and that's really the crux of our problem. The land that is here being so proximate to Washington, D.C., is increasing in value every day. Um, it's hard to find pieces of land that are appropriate or of a proper scale, I should say, for a, a, a larger scale affordable housing complex. I'm much more concerned about our firefighters, our sheriff's deputies, our school employees um, being able to live here where they work. Um, then I, I, I mean, I appreciate the concerns of the millennials and I appreciate the concerns of uh, corporations who would want to hire the millennials, that they are able to be right here but, um, you know, when I was 30 or so, I, I had to buy a house out in the suburbs because I couldn't afford to be in the back bay of Boston, even though I might have enjoyed that. So it sounds to me like you're, you may have added a, an additional dimension to what I was saying. I was trying to say that perhaps we're talking about low-income housing versus millennial housing. You're saying that there's a third demographic, uh, the demographic of the uh, moderate income, uh, particularly the, the Arlington employee, the county employee, and that we should be focusing on that? It, it is the demographic that I am most concerned about as an Arlington resident, yes. And what specific steps should we do to address that demographic? We are, we are doing, as I said, some very good things with affordable housing. I think that smaller scale projects which are targeted to a, a particular lower demographic may be useful, maybe in um, partnership with uh, charitable or faith-based organizations. Um, I think that we might have the possibility to open up the list of uh, available um, housing units to those who work for Arlington County as uh, kind of a first choice. This, is, um, this would have to pass a, a, a review, um, legal review, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But mm -hmm. I think it would be a social good. Bruce, uh, I know that you, you have long political experience. Uh, so when we turn to issues of economic development, uh, something that, that many Arlingtonians care very deeply about, uh, I'm sure you scare, uh, share my skepticism about uh, uh, as opposed to making choices, uh, a candidate is always going to say both this and that. And I want to get at the choice issue with respect to economic development here. There could be two different policies on the margin for Arlington economic development. The idea of looking for large whales that can be brought in to fill up our uh, our vacancies uh, by, by bringing in the large corporations that will bring with them thousands of, of employees. And there could be the attracting many fish 
the uh, small business development initiatives and so on. Of course, we'd like to do both. But if you were to be prioritizing among those two in the sort of economic development that you would be advocating as a county board member, where would your leanings fall? Just last week, I was, um, uh, Wednesday, I think it was a Wednesday or Thursday night, I was in Crystal City at the um, opening festival of 1776 uh, Challenge um, uh, program. And I thought I saw the future there. Uh, there were, the streets were lined with 30-ish tech workers, a lot of food trucks, music, lots of informational um, uh, booths. Um, I think that Crystal City is poised to, um, to come back as a campus. I, I, I walk through it and I, I, I see a campus. I think it was kind of built like a federal campus uh, back when it was built. If we could attract uh, a, a research facility, let's say um, a, a Virginia Tech uh, research facility in the center of Crystal City, uh, focused on biometrics, for instance, focused on uh, cybersecurity. I think the new entrepreneurs, given that attractor, along with the Pentagon, the airport, and I mean, our, we have so many strengths in terms of our location, entrepreneurs would start to cluster around Crystal City. I think that, so that's kind of your second, um, uh, bring in the smaller people, but I wasn't talking about the mom and pops. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the next wave of, um, of tech development, and I think we can become a locus for that, and I think Crystal City can become a, a very uh, hip place um, amongst that group. Now, to go back to the whales, they want a different kind of building than we have in Crystal City. Crystal City is kind of a uh, 70s, 80s uh, thing, e even though several of them are being uh, rehabbed. Um, a friend of mine is locating his office uh, to there from Roslyn because Roslyn is being redeveloped um, slowly. But when it is redeveloped, it'll be redeveloped as A plus space. And that's where the whales will want to locate because they want a different kind of space than we have on offer in Crystal City. Now, in light of that, that, that if I hear you saying you, you're very attracted to the idea of, of uh, bringing in schools of fish, uh, Arlington Economic Development has a single FTE, uh, Tara Palacios, in charge of the Biz Launch program. Uh, no doubt there are additional initiatives in Arlington Economic Development that are aimed at the development of, of smaller businesses, the, the um, Tandem NSI initiative and so on. Um, but would you have Arlington Economic Development devote greater resources to smaller, uh, smaller business incubation? It's a good question because um, I think we have... It's all, it's all, we always go back to we need to do both in order to get somewhere, or we need to do all of the things that we can think of in order to get one thing done. We don't know what we're going to fail at, and we don't know what the times are not going to allow us to accomplish. So we need to be following multiple paths. Um, I'm a big fan of encouraging the market and encouraging independent players to locate here. I'm not a fan of incentives. I don't think you can pay somebody, meaning a corporation or a company, I don't think you can pay them to go where they don't want to go. If they want to come, you can't keep them away. One of the things that voters are going to have to do on June 9th is to uh, look at six candidates and try to figure out how they differ uh, in order to decide who should be the Democratic candidates for the county board. What can you do to help those voters gain some space, some visibility among those candidates and decide how the six of you differ materially and how that leads to the vote in the voting booth? I think that I um, differ significantly from the other candidates in that I am a mature voice. I'm 63 years old, I have a lot of experiences under my belt, and I will be bringing many diverse experiences to the table at the county board. I'm a common sense candidate because I have solved 
common sense problems here in, in Arlington. I have built my own home with my own hands, not just hired a builder. And so I know my way through the inside of the Arlington County uh, operations just from that. I know many of the players inside the building. I'm um, a problem solver. I'm also a bit of a visionary. I like to look into the future and see what's coming. This is also a factor of age. I've not been involved in the operations of the Arlington County government. I've not been on commissions. I've not been uh, appointed. I'm outside of the democratic leadership structure. And I think that is a valuable asset because I can bring a different point of view, new eyes, and I'm not invested in the way things have been done before. And yet I also bring democratic values. Going back to something we spoke about earlier, the, the, the desire for continuity and the, uh, contrasting that with the, the, the change that's been going on. Uh, do you think that, Democrat, that voters in November uh, are looking for uh, democratic solutions? Uh, or do you think that, that the election of John Weistat uh, was a suggestion that, that really uh, the, the county voters themselves are wanting to have uh, greater contrast uh, among county board candidates? I think the elect John Weistat has a very um, a long history of working in the neighborhoods in Arlington, and he was well known um, among many, many populations here. I think that his election was an anomaly in that we had the very divisive wedge issue of the streetcar. Um, were that election to happen again today, we may have a different outcome. However, your point that are the people of Arlington uh, uh, requesting and perhaps insisting on different points of view on the Arlington County Board? I, th I say yes, and that's why I'm running. I also believe that the Democratic primary in June 9th will set the stage for a Democratic sweep in November. Lacking the wedge issue, I do not believe that the independent candidates and the so-called independent candidates will um, uh, be able to harness any, uh, any power the, that John Weistat had. I believe that I am the candidate who offers the Democratic Party a new point of view. You made a point just a little bit ago uh, about how you uh, have not served on uh, commissions uh, or within the Arlington County government. Um, why not? I've served with my neighborhood. I've been in the Maywood Community Association for well ever since I got here. I served on the task force um, that uh, uh, developed and, and uh, uh, established the uh, Cherrydale Fire Station, which we were able to put on privately owned land purchased by the county. Um, I, I served on uh, com sidewalk construction projects for my neighborhood. Why haven't I gone countywide? I haven't found, I haven't been called to do that. My, my public service has been with my church, I'm a trustee. Um, and with my neighborhood, and uh, uh, I, I simply haven't been called to go countywide. But now I think that because the other candidates seem to be so similar, I thought that we needed a fresh voice. Arlingtonians often talk about the Arlington way, uh, this idea of uh, bringing in a diversity of voices and making sure that everyone is heard. Um, in contemporary decision making, uh, can the Arlington Way uh, survive while still allowing us to be nimble enough to make the important decisions that we're going to face over the next five or ten years? I think what you're calling the Arlington Way may, may be um, a memory uh, when we were not so large and complex. We still have s many, many commissions and citizen groups. We have a lot of involved, smart, opinionated citizens <laughs> who are willing to get 
um, their hands dirty in the county government, and I think that's our great strength. Um, the, if whether the, these groups are heard by the county board is really a challenge now, given that there are so many of us, and the county board has, the job has become so much more complex than it was, say, 10 years ago, even. Uh, so being heard is the challenge. And I think on the county board, we, I would like to take on the challenge of communicating much better with the people of Arlington about the intended consequences of decisions made by the county board, the wishes, the long game that the county board is engaged in. Um, I think that it's important that um, the county board articulate um, uh, the, the vision. And I think that that would need to require an enhancement of the um, communications arm of the county government in, in ways that would accomplish that. Do you think that the county board, as it has been comprised to date uh, in the last five years, has been sufficiently rigorous in the scrutiny that it has applied to the county government and the county manager's office? The county manager way of government uh, offers us a, a, a very efficient method of government. Um, I think that the county board, once again to get back to communication, needs to uh, uh, be very clear about the intentions and the directions that um, the county needs to go in uh, when charging the manager, who then charges the staff. Our staff is very, very highly trained. Our staff is uh, uh, one of the best in the country, I'm sure. But I don't think they necessarily get the overall guidance that um, would lead the county to a strategic destination. I think that the strategic planning, the overall planning, um, has been uh, somewhat fragmented, and we need to address that. As a county board member, you would have the opportunity to advocate for our top priorities strategically. Uh, what would be your top three priorities, the messaging that you would be emphasizing over and over and over again in the community and in county board meetings? In no particular order, the top three that I, I would uh, uh, emphasize is um, uh, revitalizing our uh, Crystal City and Roslyn area because um, to accomplish our dreams, we do need money. And it, that's very important. We don't want our, our taxes to get out of balance. Number two, as we grow, we're going to, and we are growing in population uh, constantly and quickly, we need to preserve our green spaces and our parks. Our, these are a vital aspect of urban living. They are uh, essential to our health, um, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Um, and I don't want to see uh, green spaces or parklands um, nibbled away for fire stations or for any other uh, civic facility use. We can find the property. It's going to be a challenge and it might be a little expensive, but it won't be as expensive as losing our parklands and our green spaces. Once they are gone, they will never return. That's number two. Supporting our schools is, I think, a given. It's the basis of our, our prosperity here is our fine school system. We do need to address the overcrowding issue. We can't just let it slide, and we have let it slide for the last five years anyway. Um, this needs to be addressed now. Um, and also the diversity of the housing in Arlington. We do need to preserve the full spectrum of opportunities for particularly our residents and our employees here in Arlington. Bruce, we're almost out of time, but uh, uh, one of the issues that I think comes up time and time again is how does a county board member perform his or her functions on a part-time basis? Should the county board position be a full-time paid position? I think the county board member's position right now is a full-time job. Um, Mary Hines certainly uh, worked far more than part-time. I'm sure uh, Jay and Walter and all of the others um, don't consider this a part-time job. 
I don't consider it a part-time job. I'm semi-retired. I can devote the time to the county board position that it requires. I'm not sure how others would intend to accomplish this while holding another job or uh, or working toward their next political position or whatever their uh, motivation might be. I'm here to serve the county. I'm a longtime county resident. I'm not going on to the next political position. Uh, if you give me eight years, I'll give you all of my time. Bruce, if you are looking back 10 years from now, and you've been on the county board, uh, what's the signature project that you would say, that's why voters elected me? Every piece of parkland and green space is still there though we have grown significantly in population and it is used much more intensely by our new residents. That is a, would be a, a real sense, that would, be, that would make me very happy. If I could walk down the 21st, uh, in, 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 uh, if I could walk down Crystal City and um, just see it alive again, or maybe for the first time in the way I imagine it, I would feel so good. Bruce Wilgenon, thank you so much for joining us today. We're out of time. Uh, best of luck in June, and uh, if you proceed through, best of luck in November. Thank you very much for joining us for Candidate Spotlight, a production of Arlington Independent Media. Until next time, I'm your host, Ted Billich. Good day. <laughs>